Hi everybody, Delman Mehta here, and thank you for once again joining me on my journey as I go through my favorites list on fanfiction.net. Uh, so now, uh, for those who don't know, I've been reading these, uh, reading fanfiction for over a decade and a half now, and my fanfiction.net favorites list got a little bloated, and I decided, you know what, let me curate this. Uh, I started that two years ago, uh, more than two years ago at this point, almost coming up on three years now, actually. But um, I did that a while back, and I've been going through them, rereading them all by sorted by publication date, and seeing if they still deserve to stay on my list. I think the first stories were from like 2003. Right now, I'm in the middle of uh, 2012, and it's going there. I think I have another like 500 stories to go, so. Let's dive into seven stories here, and let's see what first one we have is Debt of a Sword by Gabriel Blessing. And Gabriel Blessing is um, his author, basically, I, I figure he's most well known for uh, In Flight, which is another Fate Stay Night and Sekirei crossover. Um, this is not that, it's a, this is a one shot, and unlike that one where basically Shiro kind of replaces the main character here Shiro is still like an outsider to the main plot of Sekirei where he just stumbles in and then he ends up in a friendship with Mia and it's basically a slow burn romance over a very long uh, over a long period of time that shows like how they grow closer and closer to each other and it feels really natural in in a way that most Sekirei fics don't because of the love at first sight nature of sec the Sekirei bond um the character beats i feel are really really great and the small injections of humor keep the story from becoming too dull to those who aren't into purely slow burn romance tales i super enjoyed this a lot not just for the tale itself but for also drawing a spotlight onto mia who i feel gets most overlooked in most fics that i read for Sekirei. so highly recommended it. it's gonna stay on my list All right, number two is Almost Paradise by Sai was the Sai Swa Viper or something like that. Uh, I don't know how to spell his name, pronounce his name. It's really weird. Um, but this is a Harry Potter fic that is a prequel to a fic I believe I talked about in the last video called Wanderer. Uh, so Wanderer was the idea was Harry became immortal after the events of canon and because he was he was about to get kidnapped by the Department of Mysteries and stuff and he wanted to go on the run. His friends attached a dimension hopping bracelet onto his arm, which he can't fully control, so he's now just hopping from dimension to dimension. And Wanderer ends with him, uh, was going to be his tale in the MCU. That got kicked off my list because it didn't get very far. This one is a self-contained um, prequel story that could be right before Wanderer, like, or miles before there's no real clear thing just no the only thing is he's been jumping for a while and then it's all just this is just a tale of one of the universes he jumped into uh it's really interesting you know it's him dealing with a non-magical london uh and him dealing with meet seeing his parents and the marauders back in that time when there's still a voldemort around chasing them stuff um, it's really enjoyable and nice, you know, you have Jaded Harry, who's obviously been on a bunch of, uh, journeys by this point, so he's got that world weariness, but also some, he's still got that longing for family and stuff, which leads to this whole story that we're here with. Um, I really did enjoy this a lot. The only issue I have is there isn't really... If you take this as a standalone, you might get a little confused because there's no in the the intro explaining the situation and how he ended up there is not present. It's only in the in Wanderer, but that's not really a huge deal breaker. And I still think this is a really great story, worth the read, and it's gonna stay on my list. Now we're gonna dive into the world of Nagima with the oncoming storm by Fernando de la France. Uh, so this is a, uh, basically starts um, with the first season of Agima where he just shows up to teach. Uh, the difference being he's 
basically I think I think it's five years like he's now 15 um, and it's that so he has more experience but he didn't gra- he still graduated at 10 Neji but instead of just immediately going to teaching he was assigned to essentially a war and so this is a soldier with PTSD coming in now to teach other 15 year olds uh, Neji's new this his new past now means that he's not a naive little boy and so he takes definitive action when his secrets get exposed and he doesn't try to like do naive things like getting buddy buddy with Eva he's just like no you're you're a mass murderer and that so I'm not gonna fucking help you stuff like that like it would have been interesting to see how his new outlook deals with fights like the Kyoto trip or Chow schemes like I don't know if how he would have dealt with Kotaro like would he have just killed him instantly or like Chow especially another one like those would have been really interesting to see with this new you know background but this is again one of the many many fix that just doesn't get anywhere you know we get two real moments where his background is juxtaposed against how he was in canon uh but that's it and it's just not enough to keep this on my list sorry it's gonna fall off uh number four is called demon's luck by half-baked cat and this is an author who tried to continue a defunct story that was also on my favorites list and still is. Uh, the original story being the night the House of Cards was built. Uh, that's way back, probably one of the the earlier videos that I made. But um, uh, that story only had two chapters and was pretty fun. But it was still fun enough that I kept it on my list. And it's basically about Naruto as a kid stumbling into a high-stakes poker game and winning a whole bunch of shit this story uh keeps the first chapter basically the exact same uh and the second one and from then on tries to to make the changes uh so again this doesn't get much further but there's more added and enough different that i found this to be suitably enjoyable on its own not just as a as a recreation of all the jokes in the first chapter which was essentially a copy of the original story I still thought it. I, th- I thought it to be very enjoyable. It's essentially a plus one to the, the other story with extra bits that are entertaining. So if you enjoy the original, or you just like some fun with a chibi Naruto who's precocious and funny, I think you'll enjoy this, and it's going to stay on my list. Okay. Number f- number five is forging a king by Lady Celestial Star. And this is a Harry Potter crossover with Lord of the Rings, uh, the movies mainly, um, where basically during Harry's fifth year, uh, Umbridge throws him into a painting that they, people didn't know how it worked, and it sends him into the world of Lord of the Rings a little bit before the movies actually start. And there, from there on, Harry joins the Fellowship. Uh, to save the ring while also having his own little quest that he has to do in order to actually return home. Uh, The story itself is decently written, has a nice flowing pace that actually matches rather well with how I remember the the early Harry Potter books flowed, Um, and it keeps you occupied by changing enough from the movies that it's not a simple retread with a plus one, and seeing how the wizards are dealing, and you know, we constantly cut back to um, Harry's world because it's n- unlike most stories where they get sent to another world it's not just all him and it's not just only reactions because there, there is um, his like he actually gets split essentially and his comatose body is still in the normal world with all the people looking for him and such so that that's an interesting dynamic and seeing how they're dealing with all the stuff going on as well keeps things interesting uh, the biggest issue I had with this story was the ending is in that it just feels really anticlimactic after the build, especially after the buildup of the chapters that are basically, like, basically the last three chapters, I would say, are the ending, and those feel really anticlimactic, especially considering just the the fourth and fifth last chapters. Like, the two chapters before that ending set are actually building up something super huge, but it just ends really, really fast, and I feel it's because, like, the author knew that like okay i'm gonna make a sequel so i just want to get to that and they just rush through the ending um 
it's not completely disappointing. Um, it's it's it works. It's just not as big as I was hoping it to be. Um, still, I I feel overall the story is pretty pretty fun, and and there is more, and it does climax with the movies. All it, it finishes the series with the movies because the sequel was with the Hobbit trilogy, I believe, and the sequel is lengthy but incomplete. So there is more. But honestly, as a condensed story with a big ass sequel hook, I still think this is a really decent uh, addition to the Lord of the Rings fan fiction thing, and I like it a lot. It's gonna stay on my list. Uh, all right, now two more stories here, both one shots. So we'll go first one with Ten Minutes and a Week of Hell" by Crazy Duck Five Two Eight Zero. And this is basically Harry raining hell down onto the Wizarding World because a few teachers couldn't wait for 10 minutes to solve an issue. Uh, it's short. It's Harry just filled with righteous anger after he goes from target to target because of a small incident, which is basically the straw that broke the camel's back. Uh, and it leads to just leads to a series of scenes where he runs circles around everybody and destroys each person in a sense. Again, short, entertaining, fun. It's going to stay on my list. All right. And the last one for this video is Normal Girl by Durandal. Uh, I've said it again. I've said it before. Rest in peace, Durandal. I'm sorry. But I, uh, and I, I've loved every single, basically all of his work. Uh, I wish he had gotten more. This is another one of his Haruhi one shots where. Kion gets another unexpected meeting by a pair of characters that I basically never see in Haruhi fanfiction. Um, and it's just a short scene with this meeting and the fallout where he actually talks to Haruhi about it, and I just really enjoyed it. It's real fun with a little twist while still playing to Kion's expectations. I, I think it's it's one of his great stuff. It's it's a complete idea of from Durandal and basically all of his ideas I love. It's going to stay on my list and I feel like you should check it out. So there we go. That was another seven stories read. Uh, fan fiction status time now. We've I have now read 745 stories total and 362 of them have managed to stay on my list. Uh, so as I said, um, I've got quite a few more. Um, I will say uh, next one of the next videos that I make might be a special one because recently uh, I saw a bunch of my a bunch my list quickly shrunk, which implies a bunch of stories were deleted from the website. Uh, and so I went back and looked through them and. I, I found a decent amount, like not all of them, uh, some of them I couldn't find anywhere else, but I did manage to get seven of them and find them in other locations. Granted, they're from all over the place, but I think I'm going to do it like a special episode of jumping ahead, not being in, um, in, you know, published publication timeline, just because these stories are not on fanfiction.net anymore, but I still want to talk about them and they are available in other places. So I don't want to forget about them, so I'm just going to do a video with those seven right away. Might not. I don't know if that'll be the next video or the video after, but it'll be one of the upcoming videos. Um, but yeah, again, all these stories are linked in the description, so please give them a look, give it a like if you like this video, or comment if you think my taste is trash, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.